I'm Matt Kenny, and here's some Canadian news. I know it can be hard to understand what the politicians are really saying, so I'm here to translate it for you. I guess more on, on the Canadian Energy Centre. How can you still stand by it, though, when you know that it just hasn't been working to this point? And, and, and even the, the report itself, um, Steve Allen says that labeling the, the campaigns as anti-Alberta or anti-Albertan is not helpful or constructive. So why are you still referring to things as anti-Alberta? Well, I think anti-Alberta was given a definition in the terms of reference for the commissioner. It was given, given a very specific definition, and it, it meant uh, campaigns that targeted, uh, that, that were meant to frustrate or delay oil and gas resources here in Alberta. That's the definition of anti-Alberta. Anti it's meant to target our number one industry and our resources. So um, I, I wouldn't get too, too overly excited about the word anti-Alberta. Um, that can be a distraction, and we've learned and we're well aware of how some of these environmental organizations work to discredit things, and I think uh, that's, that's an area where this is happen, happening. With the Canadian Energy Centre, as I said, it's, uh, it's long overcome some of its initial growing pains. It's changing, it's adapting. It's adapting to uh, the new reality where, we're, where ESG initiatives are, are more important than ever before. It's adapting to uh, the reality of a world where uh, uh, energy sources and the world is seeking uh, energy slow sources with lower lower emissions. It's adapting to that and it's using it's, it's using its strengths, which are in the research area, and ability to reach target markets like New York City with uh, uh, traditional ad campaigns. And that work will, con will continue. And I think what we can learn from the findings of the report is that we need an organization like that more than ever because we, we understand, we now know the sophistication of, of how some of these campaigns are operated. So we need to use... We need to understand that and move forward. And uh, you know, I think the the Canadian Energy Centre is adapting to those those areas, and it's 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 achieved quite a bit of success lately with some of its research and advocacy. That question was anti-Albertan, but don't get hung up on what it means to be anti-Alberta. Um, and then uh, on on misinformation, the key findings on the top of the report say that it proves misinformation. Back in 2019, when Jason Kenney announced the inquiry, he said that they were going to look at disinformation and propaganda. There's nothing in this report that proves misinformation, though. Is there anything you can point to around that? Well, I think a, a question when you, when you look at these studies through the context and the lens of a public inquiry, a public inquiry is a quasi-judicial type of, type of report where they have to follow rules of due process, evidentiary rules, to find that whether something is a misrepresentation or a fact would require a very, very significant amount of work to prove something is true or false. You want to prove that uh, um, even any, any minor fact on emissions data would have to go through a hearing to find whether it's misrepresented or true or false. That simply was not necessary in this case. We have a report that's extremely comprehensive that details the campaign in detail in 650 pages, and I think I would encourage people to read it for themselves and understand it, digest that information, and decide, from, decide for this themselves whether what happened and what was said and what was done was fair because it hurt a lot of Albertans, and I think they have a right to be outraged. Misinformation? What misinformation? Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah, we didn't find any misinformation, but that doesn't mean they're not hiding it somewhere.